Hey guys, if you like my videos, click on subscribe and give me a like. And don't forget the bell so you can get notified of new ones. Okay. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new HP 14 inch laptop. Um, there's no personal data or anything on it. Literally just came out of the box. I'm going to do a little upgrading on it for the customer. It's um, nothing real fancy. It's got the new AMD Ryzen 3 processor in it. The 3200U runs about 2.6 gigahertz. Um, the exact model number is HP 14-DK0028WM. Um, I'm going to upgrade the memory in it and I'm going to put a larger capacity NVMe SSD in it. It comes with only 4 gigabytes of memory, a DDR4 and a 128 gig SSD. Well, the customer wants a 250 gig SSD, which I'm going to put in a brand new Crucial NVMe drive. And I'm also going to take out the 4 gigs of RAM. It has two expansion slots in there. One with one 4 gig in there right now. I'm going to take that out and they want 32 gigs of RAM, which it will support. So I'm going to put in two 16, gig, 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 16 gigabyte sticks of DDR4 of the Corsair memory, giving them a total of 32 gigabytes. That's the max amount. So we're going to upgrade the RAM, we're going to upgrade the SSD. Uh, I will do a clean Windows install on it, Windows 10, using my USB flash drive. I'm not going to show you the whole process on that. I have lots of videos you can watch where I do this, but you just create this using the download the Windows 10 media creation tool. It's free. Get the full Windows 10, the latest version. And once you get the new drive in there, you put it back together, it'll automatically boot up this, and away you go with the install. It'll take about 10, 12, 15 minutes at the most. So I'm going to shut it down. Um, we're going to put the new parts in it, kind of beef it up a little bit, and hope for the best. Alright guys, um, I've already taken out the screws on this, but I, I have these still on here because I want to show you how to remove these little rubber feet on the bottom. The only two exposed screws on this little 14 inch HP are these two right here in the front. Now these two here are different than all the rest of them, they're really short. Uh, so make sure you get those back in the right hole. But we got to remove these little rubber feet. They have self adhesive on the back, so if you peel them off, Put them back on, they should stick just fine. If not, use a couple of micro specs, micro specs of super glue to hold them on on the ends. But you should be just fine. Done tons of these and never had a problem. So we gotta lift these up. This one in the front, this strip here, is quite thin. The one in the back is about twice as thick. So this one here, when you peel it off, you gotta be careful you don't stretch it too much because it's gonna end up longer and you're gonna have all this extra. If you just take your time putting it back on, kind of get the ends going and just work it in, it should go back on just fine. So I'm going to get a sharp tool here. Be careful you don't scratch it. This is brand new. So we're going to just start this up like this. And then just carefully lift it without trying not to stretch it too much. The adhesive they use is pretty good. You have to get a little bit of force. We're going to try to lay it in the back here out of the way with the adhesive side up so you don't get goobers on it. So you can see there's another screw under here which I've already taken out. But this screw and these screws back here are all the same length. Just these two are different. So we're going to do the same in the back here. Just kind of get out of the edge there. This one here you shouldn't have any stretching problems with. But again, I've already pre-removed the screws. Don't want to bore you with that. And this one here has these little knobs that sink down into these holes here. So it's pretty simple to line up the back ones. We're going to lay that out of the way. And you got three screws in the back. Total of three in the front. Okay? So... This exact model of this HP 14 inch laptop is 14-DK0028WM. I'll put it on the screen there for you. So we're going to flip it back over. Got all the screws out. I'm going to take, you're going to need 
course, a Phillips, a magnetic Phillips screwdriver, preferably magnetic. That's a number zero, good quality screwdriver to get the screws out. A couple of plastic spudger and pry tools. You really don't want to use metal tools because you're going to leave tool marks. It's brand new out of the box. We don't want to do this or do that. Um, there's no data involved. I've already, you know, booted this into Windows, but we're going to do, I'm going to do a fresh clean install of Windows 10, get all the updates, drivers that I can from HP and some of the other HP stuff. But I always prefer doing clean installs when I don't have to worry about data and things like that. So I'll be starting with a good clean slate. So I'm going to take my little spudger tool here and there's a seam all around the perimeter here where the um, top meets the bottom pan here. I'm just going to get it in the seam here and kind of get it started gently. Don't pry too hard. You can see it comes up without too much force. But just be patient doing this and don't poke anything in there too far because you got speakers and stuff in there and other delicate components. So we'll do the same on this side. Just work it up gently. Sometimes along the back there it's a little stubborn. There, so we got it started. Now I'm gonna, you can see I got it, got it started here. So I'm gonna flip it, close it, and flip it back over. And carefully just kind of jiggle it up until it breaks free. Now don't for it, but don't come. Don't get in a hurry. Just oh, there it comes. You can take your little tool along in the back here and just kind of work it up along this along this back edge here. Right, right by the hinge cover. But in this case, it looks like it's going to come up without too much difficulty. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. All right, so we have it open. Um, we have two RAM slots over here. Currently, there is a four gigabyte stick of DDR4 with an empty slot. We're going to take that four gig out and put two 16s in bump it all the way up to 32 gigabytes of memory. I'm going to get rid of the factory installed M.2 drive and put a brand new 250 gig NVMe crucial drive in there. Right here. The mounting screw for the drive is right there. Um, but because I'm going to be poking and prodding around here, I am going to take the time to remove this battery. This one you have to actually remove the battery. If you're real careful, you, you, you should be fine. But for demonstration sakes, I'm just going to pop this battery out. Got a, got a screw here, a screw here, a screw here, and a screw over here. They come out very easily. We just don't want to damage anything. It's worth the time. Make sure you're anti-static, which I am, and my bench tops are treated with anti-static treatment at least once a day. Never ever had a problem with static. I'm going to take my little tool here and just kind of lift it up. This pulls back just like that. It disconnects right from the main board. So let's just set that right there for the moment. But one last precaution. I'm going to carefully open it. I'm going to hold the power button in for a few seconds. Just to discharge it really good. So there's no residual juice in the capacitors. All right. So let's get rid of this 4 gig stick. We'll put in our two Corsair 16 gig sticks of DDR4. And I'll have links down below where you can see all the parts that I use and the tools and whatnot. And we'll put one over here. Carefully snap it down. So the RAM's done. I'm going to remove the M.2 drive here. Just unscrew. Slide it out. Slide in our brand new one, our NVMe drive. Now, there is a place that a two and a half inch hard drive or two and a half inch SSD could be installed in here, right over here. This is the connector for it right here. Now these don't come from the factory in the box with the kit you need to do this. I, I did a lot of looking on these HPs. HP makes it kind of hard to find, but I'll put the part numbers for the SATA cable and the hard drive caddy. I'll put the part numbers right from HP. I'll put them down below. If you do a little searching, 
on Google or Amazon or eBay, you should be able to find those. AliExpress sometimes has that kind of stuff, um, but it's not included. But you could add another hard drive right here in this spot because you just need that hard drive caddy and the correct ribbon connector, okay? So we got our M2 drive, we got our RAM. We're gonna go ahead and put the battery back in it. Carefully. It only goes in one way, but don't force it. Be a nice little upgrade on this laptop. It's a Ryzen 3 3200. It's about 2.6 gigahertz processor. Not a gaming laptop by any means. It'd be a good performing little laptop. Those Ryzen's do really well. I really like the AMD Ryzen processors. They run a little hotter than the Intel's. Checking that battery. 11.56 volt battery. All right, so we got our battery mounted back in. Everything looks secure, nice and good. Now we got 32 gigs of RAM, 250 M.2 2280 NVMe drive. Got our battery, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the cover back on the bottom here. Start our fresh install. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Got a lot of other videos with different models that I do the same thing too. Show you how to make a bootable flash drive, all that good stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and put these screws back in right now. I want to kind of real quick just, oops, my bad. Show you how to, remember these little short screws go right here in the front where you can see them. So I get this front rubber strip back on to show you what I'm talking about, how it easily stretches. You can probably throw it in your freezer for about five minutes, make it cold, it might shrink back up. So you're just gonna take it and start with one end here. Get it nice and square and lined up here. And just, as you're laying it down, kind of slightly push very slightly the weight you know from this end where you started just kind of put a little pressure that way on it to shorten it up but if you pull on it and stretch it you're going to end up about a half an inch extra down at the end it's not the end of the world you just got to kind of work it these always end up being too long We'll get it. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Whatever works best for you. Well, I guess there is a wrong way, but do it the right way. Just about there. You can see we ended up by doing that little stretching this way as we go, or for whatever end you start from. It's almost there. Just kind of work it down, you should be okay. And make sure it's centered in there good so it looks pretty. Go ahead and put these back in there for you. Don't over tighten these screws just so they're nice and snug. Just make sure I'm snapped back in here. Careful squeezing. You don't want to squeeze really hard because you don't want to damage your screen on the other side of that lid. Now we're going to pop this back in there, same way we took it out. Actually, I'm going to flip this around here so we can see it better, guys. 
This one usually goes in quite simple, just like that. All right, so I'm gonna open the lid. I'm gonna take our USB Windows 10 installation drive here. And again, I have a video that you can watch on how to make one of these. Just download the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool. You get the latest, newest version of Windows 10. It's free, right from Microsoft. I'm gonna put it in the USB port over here. It don't matter which one. It should default to it and boot right off it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the power switch. I'm going to get the Windows 10 installed going. Like I said, get all the drivers, get a few things from HP. Um, pretty straightforward. It'll always say that. It says hit enter to reboot the system because the CMOS checksum has changed. The extra RAM and all that fun stuff. That comes right up to our Windows 10 setup. 64 bit, of course. Just hit enter. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this clean install guys, um, make a nice little upgrade to a otherwise pretty basic computer. Got it maxed out at 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Sky's the limit on the SSD. You can go 512, 500, one terabyte, whatever you, whatever you want to put in there. In this case, the customer wanted a 250. So I appreciate y'all watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. Have a great day and have a great holiday. Thank you.